I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's just wonderful to be with you again. It's been raining and it's overcast and it looks like there's more rain on the way. As an old farmer, I want to tell you that you cannot do anything without rain. I can hear all the farmers saying, Amen. <laughs> you know, even a flood, you can, you can work with a flood. You can divert water, you can, you can make a plan. But with a drought, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You get up every morning and uh, the maize crop and the cattle are all perk up and they try their best and then the sun comes up and then it just literally starts to wilt and dry out everything. And by midday, your spirits are down, the maize looks like onions, the cattle just lie down because there's nothing to eat and it's soul destroying. So today we're happy because I've got good news for you. That's why we've called this program Good News. Friends, everywhere you look, there is bad news. I was looking at the, 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 the news on television just the other night, and there's war in Europe. Um, there's, um, there's just uh, accounts of rape and murder and molesting of children, and it's just bad news. Everywhere we look, you know, the economy's down, political parties are at loggerheads. And you say, Lord, what, what's going on? And the Lord says, I've told you these things will happen. If you look at John chapter 16, verse 33, the Lord says, I've told you these things. In me, you'll have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. So be of good heart. Be of good heart. Be of good cheer. Because I, the Lord says, have overcome the world. I want to speak to you this, this day about good news. Folks, if it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? I, I despair when I think of a man who tries to be a farmer, for example, without God. Who does he speak to when he's in need? Well, I know I'm not actively farming any, anymore. My sons are farming. I'm just a squatter on the farm. <laughs> uh, but I want to tell you, I think it's impossible to be a, a farmer and not know God. First of all, you've got to be totally blind. I mean, you wake up every morning and you see God's glory everywhere. When I see a young calf suckling his mother, God reminds me of new birth. When I see the sun coming up in the morning and the warmth just making the grass grow, I think he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When that gentle rain falls, I just think of the power of his Holy Spirit. I want to just take a couple of scriptures just to confirm what I'm saying. If we look at Psalm 19 and verse 14, the Word of God says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Now that's why we pray that prayer. I pray that prayer every time when I'm at a conference or at a meeting. We always pray that prayer. I prayed that prayer just now before the, 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 the show started. Because I want God's words to touch your heart. I don't want any of my words or my temperament or my character or my personality. You know, I'm a human being just like you. And sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm on top of the world. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm taking a bit of strain. I've heard some bad news. Maybe there's a member of my family that's not well. I don't know. I can't allow that to come onto this program. Yes, I want to be honest. And you know I am, I'm blatantly honest, sometimes maybe a bit too honest <laughs> for my own well-being. But I do want Jesus to come through in this program. And this is the good news. The good news is, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That's, that scripture in itself is good news. I remember reading a, um, an article once uh, in one of D.L. Moody's books. He was a great evangelist that lived in the last century. He spoke to 100 million people with no television, no radio. And he spoke about a boy preacher, a young 16-year-old boy who was a former pickpocket from, I think, Manchester in England. And he went across to America. He followed D.L. Moody after D.L. Moody had been in the UK. 
And he asked Moody if he could preach. And Moody wasn't there that weekend, but they allowed him to preach. A 16-year-old boy. You know that he preached the whole weekend and the next week on one scripture verse. That's right. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. There's a whole sermon just in itself. That he gave his only begotten son. Another, another whole sermon in itself. That whosoever believes, there's another sermon, in him shall not perish, another sermon, but shall have everlasting life. I want to tell you that that verse is basically the whole Bible wrapped up in one verse. John chapter 3 verse 16. It's good news, folks. The number one point there is God loves you. God loves me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Now, now, many of you watching this program have got family. You've got children, you've got daughters, sons. You've got moms and dads. You've got grannies and granddads. Would you offer up any of them for one sinner? I don't think so. And that's what exactly what God did. And that love, I want to tell you today, is good news. The Lord is looking for you to take one step towards Him and He'll run towards you. That's how much He loves you. It overwhelms me sometimes when I think of the love of God. The Lord even says, I think it's in the book of Isaiah, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, He said, even a mother will forsake her suckling baby, but the Lord will never forsake you. Now that takes some doing. I've never ever seen a mother do that. But the Lord says, even if she does that, I love you even more than that. So that's good news. The good news is you are not alone. You may be sitting in that flat and you say, Angus, I'm so lonely. I've lost my husband. My children are on another continent. I'm all by myself. No, you're not, madam. The Lord Jesus Christ is in that flat with you as I'm speaking to you right now. Okay? Maybe there's a young person who's very sick and you say, there's no hope for me. I want to tell you that Jesus is the healer. That's right. Call out to him and ask him to inter intercede for you. He is the intercessor so that the Father can heal you. That's good news. If we look at 1 John 1, 9, okay, we, it says quite simply, if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to heal you from all unrighteousness. Folks, I want to say to you that that was the second verse I learned when I became a Christian. The first one, was the one I've just quoted, John chapter 3, verse 16. The second one was 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, all you have to say is sorry. That's right. Lord, I am sorry I lost my temper yesterday with the children before they went to school. Lord, I'm sorry that I looked at that woman with lust in my heart. Please forgive me. Lord, that thing which I took before I became a believer, I'm taking it back. God says... If we confess our sins, He will forgive us. Folks, that's good news. You know, God is not like you and me. Praise the Lord for that. Eh? <laughs> when we forgive, we forgive because it's convenient. And you know something? Two months down the road when we do something wrong, that same thing comes up. Remember what you did before. But when God forgives, He forgets. That's why I always say He's got a bad memory. If you, if you ask Him to forgive you for what you did before you became a Christian, it's forgotten forever. Forgotten. Okay? It's thrown into that big pond, you know, and that sign goes up there, no more fishing. Okay? No more fishing. It's gone. It's forgotten. Lord, remember what I did before I became a believer? The Lord says, no, I don't remember. Why don't you remember, Lord? Because the, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That's good news. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So Angus, does that mean that I'm not disqualified anymore? That's exactly what it means. But Angus, you know what the Bible says about murder? And I did something terrible before I became a believer. I killed a man. Or I, I, I stole something. Or I'm, I'm divorced. Or... Um, I've done this terrible thing. That was the old man. The Lord says, go and sin no more. Your sins are for forgiven. But the bottom line is, don't do it again. See, 
Folks, I want to tell you that Jesus came for sinners. He didn't come for the righteous. He didn't come for those that are whole. He came for the sick. He came for the downtrodden. He came for the widows and the orphans. He came for the convict. He came for the, the man that's gone bankrupt. The man whose wife has run away and left him. That's who he came for. That's good news. He says, I am prepared to walk this road with you if you walk it according to my principles. But I want to say one thing right now. And this is probably more important than anything else on this program. Don't play the fool with God, sir. Don't try and turn God on like a, a light switch. Today you're crying and you, you're asking for forgiveness. Tomorrow you're doing the same thing again. Don't play with God. He's too big. He can see right through you. Other people might not, but God will. When you confess your sins, you better believe it. And you better be sincere. And then I tell you what, you've got a new life waiting for you. That's what I did. I did it 35 years ago. I remember the day so clearly. I felt no uh, emotional feelings. I didn't see any flashes of lightning. I heard no thunder. But I made a conscious decision that I was going to start again. And the good news is God heard my prayer and He's given me new life. See, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 is good news. This is what it says. If you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart that He's been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Saved from what, Angus? Saved from hell and damnation. Saved from depression. Saved from a grave which is worse than, than death. I want to say to you that as a believer, you need to confess Jesus with your mouth. This business about, I don't have to tell everybody that I'm a Christian to prove that I'm a believer. No, no, we're not talking about that. But why are you ashamed to speak up? I defy you to work in an office full of people and not one of them knows that you're a believer. I defy you to, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. For me, it's contagious. I can't help it. Because Jesus is in everything that I do and say and think. Right? Everything, folks. Whether it's the news, whether it's some report or whatever it is, He's involved. You must speak up. In fact, He says, if you don't speak up for me, I won't speak up for you to my Father in heaven. There is nothing to be ashamed of. If we go to that scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. First the Jew and then the Gentile. See, the power comes when you speak up for the Lord. Some of you are saying, Angus, I gave my life to the Lord a long time ago, but I don't see any power. I don't feel any strength. I don't feel any difference. I'm always depressed and I'm down. When was the last time you told somebody what Jesus Christ means to you? That's the question. Oh, well, you know, I haven't really got around to that. And why not? See, when you confess with your mouth, what it does, it cements your conversion. That's right. That's why you, those of you that know me well, many times I'll say, now, now that you've given your life to the Lord, walk out of this hall, walk out of this stadium, arena, wherever it might be, and tell the first three people that you meet what you've done today. Why do I do that? Because a man came to see me after I gave my life to the Lord and he asked me the same question. What did you do this morning? And straight away I was in a defensive mode and I said, well, what do you mean? He says, I see you got up in church and you went to the front and committed your life to Christ. Did you mean it? And of course there was still a lot of the old man, old man in me. I said, of course I meant it. What do you think? He says, well, then tell the first three people tomorrow morning what you did. And folks, that was the start of my journey. I'll never forget, we were on our way to a stock sale. We were going to go buy some cattle. I was driving right next to the RSM, or the, uh, the commandant of the local commandos in town, a chap with a beard, a big tough man, a wonderful man who's now with Jesus. He's actually waiting for me to go home. And I said to Ian, I said, Ian, I gave my life to Jesus. And he, his face went pale, and he, he didn't know what we were in the pub together on the Saturday night. I'm talking about a radical Damascus Road experience. He said, Angus, I'm so pleased for you. And I said, what about you, Ian? He said, no, not for me. 
Three years later, he phoned me up on a Saturday afternoon. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Angus, I can't go on. I need help. I said, I'm coming, brother. And on the carpet in his lounge in front of his wife and his children, him and I were on our knees. We were weeping together and he gave his life to the Lord. And then the Lord took him home a couple of years ago. He's with Jesus. When you confess Jesus Christ with your mouth, there's power. And when you compromise the word of God, there is no power, folks. Now, the good news is, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ, and you believe in your heart that he has been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. That's it. That's it. And I want to tell you, after telling Ian, I told the, the other two guys, one chap was a, a fertilizer rep. He's also going to be with the Lord. He was lost at sea. He was a sailor. After that, he took a yacht to gain around the world. And then I told another guy, and I can't remember how many I've told him since then. I'm telling you right now, the good news is, Jesus says, if you're not ashamed of me, I won't be ashamed of you. That's good news, folks. Folks, why are we so ashamed of the Lord? I want to say to you, it's peer pressure. That's right. Especially us men, you know, I'll do it my way, you know. I don't need to hide behind the cross. That's the big spiel. I want to tell you something now, sir. It's not hiding behind the cross. It's standing in front of the cross and saying, I'm not ashamed to belong to this man, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus never stole any money. Jesus never ever swindled anybody. Jesus never ever took a, a woman from another man. He never committed adultery. He, ne he wasn't a pedophile. He never molested a child. He never raped anybody. He never spoke any untruth. Why is it that we're ashamed to speak up for him? Can only be one thing, pride, foolish pride. That same pride that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven when he started to think he was actually as good as God. Never touch God's glory. And so when you lift up Jesus, he says, I will draw all men unto myself. And that's all I'm doing now. I'm lifting up the name of the, of the king. And that's good news. Why, Angus? Because he's the healer. He heals the sick. He forgives sin. He is a mentor and a father like you've never known. You say to me, Angus, I don't have a father figure. I want to tell you that he is my father figure and my mentor. In other words, whatever he says, I believe. And whatever he does, I'm trying to do as well. That's it. So he's a mentor. He is a, a husband to the widow. That's right. A father to the fatherless. Oh, folks, he is indeed someone to be so proud of. If you've got no power in your life today, I want to tell you, you need to start speaking up for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's good news. What about Romans 8.28? For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. I can confess and I can uh, witness for that. All things, folks. All things mean all things. Okay? And since I've become a believer, that's exactly what's happened. I'm not going to stand here and tell you a lie and say to you that from the day that I gave my life to the Lord, I've never had a problem. I think I've had more problems <laughs> since I've become a Christian than before I was a Christian. That's right. Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to take you out of the fire. He says, I'm going to walk with you through the fire. I've attempted things that I would never have attempted before I became a believer, folks. Where I am doing this program right now, some of you men will remember this place. This place was just absolutely filled with men. Thousands and thousands and thousands of men. Why did we do it? Because God told us to do it and He said that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. We had many challenges. I want to tell you something now. Many financial challenges, many spiritual challenges, but what a victory. And even as I'm talking to, to you right today, people are preparing for mighty men conferences all over this nation and indeed all over the world. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. You maybe feel, maybe you feel lonely today. You feel totally forsaken. Jesus says to you in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. But Angus, it doesn't always feel like that. Of course it doesn't. I know that. That's where faith comes in. What is faith? 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It's by faith that we walk this road. We can't see Jesus uh, with our, our carnal eyes, but we can see him with our spiritual eyes. Folks, he's more real to me than you sitting in that chair. And that's good news. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. It doesn't matter what you go through. I'll be with you all the way. And folks, I want to pray for you as we come to an end. And so I want to say to you that if we look at uh, John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 6, you go look it up. He says, I'm going ahead. I'm going to prepare a place for you. A mansion, folks. I love old Keith Green. He was a, a gospel singer. He was a rehabilitated uh, drug addict. Uh, he had an incredible ministry. He said, if it's taken the Lord six days to make this beautiful place, and it's taken him over 2,000 years to prepare our home, in heaven, he says, man, we're living in a garbage can. <laughs> okay? I want to say to you, the good news is the best is yet to come. The good news is God is pre preparing a place for you, a mansion. Okay? And Thomas said, but Lord, how will we know how to get home? And Jesus said to Thomas, and I close with this verse, in John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one will come to the Father but by me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the good news. And the good news is Jesus Christ is our friend. Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Father, you've said in your word in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things of which you do not know. We call unto you today. My friends watching this program, Lord, some are sick in their beds. Lord, I pray even now that they lay their hand on that part of their body that they are, are battling with, Lord, and that you would supernaturally touch them. I pray for the lonely, Lord, that they'll never feel lonely again, that you, they'll invite you into their room, into their hospital room, into their prison cell, onto that lonely farm, Lord, and you will be a friend to them that sticks closer than any brother. I thank you for that young man who wants to take that giant leap, that step of faith. Lord, that you give him the courage once you've given him the word to do it. And then show him, Lord, what a good and true God you are when it comes to pass. I thank you for this precious time that we've spent together. I ask it in your precious name. Amen. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye.